In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called Fine Pivot Index. So given an array of integer nums, write a method that returns the pivot index of the, the array. So we define the pivot index as the index where the sum of all numbers on the left of the index is equal to the sum of all numbers to the right of the index. So if there no such index exists, we're going to return negative 1. If there are multiple pivot index, we just return the leftmost pivot index. So here you can see we have a, um, an array. And basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to return the pivot index. In this case, it's going to be index 3. Because here, everything on the left is actually equal to everything on the right. right? So 1 plus 7 plus 3 is 11. And 5 plus 6 is 11. So in this case, 11 is equal to 11. So we have the pivot index. So yeah, basically here you can see you have we have another example where there's no index that's satisfied. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, return negative one if there is no index that satisfy the condition. So how can we do this? Well, what we can do the naive solution is that for each element in the array, we're just going to let's say we have we want to find um, index one is actually the, the valid. Uh, the valid pivot point, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to iterate all the elements on the left and all, all the elements on the right to see if they are equal to each other, right? So we're going to get the sum of the right subarray and the sum of the left subarray to see if they are the same. In this case, they're not the same. So we're just going to continue to move to the, to the next index, in this case, uh, index two. We iterate all the elements. We basically get the sum of all the elements on the left, all the elements on the right. Um, to, to constantly um, getting the sum and comparing the left sum and the right sum. And then at the end, we're just going to return the index that has a valid condition. So in this case, this will give us a n squared time complexity, where n is the number of elements in the array. So it's not the most optimal solution, but what we can do instead is we can use a linear time complexity, where we're going to basically simply, um, first of all, get a sum of the whole array right, the entire array, right, the entire array, uh, the sum of the entire array, I believe, was 28. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to um, see, by standing at the current index, let's say index 0, the sum on the left is 0 because there is no elements on the left. The sum on the right is simply by 28 minus the current element. So, so 28 minus 1 will give us the sum on the right, right? So this is a 27. So if that's the case, then what we're going to do is we're just going to continue to see, to compare the, the left sum and the right sum, right? By simply minus the current element um, of, the, uh, of the total sum, right? So minus, so total minus the current element uh, will give us the, uh, the, 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 the right sum. In this case, now we have uh, 27 for the sum of here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take index 1, right? Index 1. Now we know that in, uh, the left index, the sum, right, is 1. The right here is going to be 27 minus 7. This will give us 20. Okay, this is the sum of the total on the right, right? So 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus uh, 12 is uh, 20, right? So in this case, we have 20 on the right. So by simply just minus 27, uh, by simply using 27 to minus the current element, will give us the uh, the sum of the the right side, which is 20. So this way, we can be able to bring time complexity down to a big O of n, where n is the number of elements in the array. So now let's try to do this in code. So what we're going to do first is we're basically going to first get a sum. So for each element in nums, we're basically going to say sum plus equal to num. Once we get the sum of the entire array, what we're going to do is we're going to um, start by simply have a variable called left sum. Right. Left sum is zero. The right sum is equal to sum. I'm going to use a for loop to iterate. So what 
we're going to do is we're going to get the current element by simply minus that on the right sum, and then plus that on the on the left sum after um, after we compare. So this is how we're going to do. First, we're going to um, get the right sum minus equal to the current element, so nuns at i. We first minus the current elements so that we have the right sum. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare that. So we're going to see if the left sum is equal to the right sum. So if that's the case, then what we can do is we can just return the current index if that's the case, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next iteration, uh, move on to the next iter uh, element to check to see if that's the current, uh, if that's the, the, the pivot index by simply just move on to the next iteration. But what we have to do is we have to get a left sum plus the current element because we're moving on to the next element, right? So in this case, if we were to move from index 0 to index 1, we have to get the left sum plus 1, okay? Because the right sum is already minus the current element already. So we just have to get left sum plus equal to nums at i. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to continue to do that until uh, we get to the end of the array. If nothing happens, we're just going to return negative 1. Okay, let's try to see if we have a valid answer. Okay, let's try to submit. So there you have it, and um, this is basically how we bring the time complexity down to linear, and the space complexity in this case is going to be constant. Okay, so thank you for watching.